we all carry crosses. I carry them, you carry them. And, and for many years, I ran from my crosses, as many of you probably do as well. And yet, I want to do this video to help you understand the value of your cross. And maybe I, maybe you will one day get to the place where I can actually want to carry my cross, to want the suffering. I'm not there yet. But there is a prayer that I have been praying that has really helped me put into perspective the concept of suffering. And that is the St. Bridget Novena. It's the 12 year novena, and it's got some very, very powerful messages with it. I'll, I'll do a video on it perhaps. But you pray seven prayers for the seven times Jesus shed his blood. And you pray those every day for 12 years. And the fifth prayer is refers to Christ carrying his cross. Of course, I've got this memorized, but I'm sure as soon as I try to do it right now, I'll forget it. But it says, Eternal Father, through Mary's unblemished hands and the divine heart of Jesus, I offer you the sufferings on the way of the cross his, and his holy wound on his shoulder as atonement for my and all of humanity's rebellion against the cross every grumbling against your holy arrangements and all other sins of the tongue as protection against such sins and for true love of the cross. Now, when I first prayed that, I was like, whew, that's, that's tough. But again, for me, it's been about four or five years that I've prayed it every day, so thousands of times. And when you really listen to the words, it says, I'm going to offer to you, God, Jesus carrying of the cross. Okay, so, so please take that to make up for our rebellion against the cross. Now, I don't know about you, but I was like, well, do I really rebel? But yeah, I do. Every time I have the slightest pain or injury or hurt or harm or sadness, God, take it away, take it away, take it away, take it away. I don't want this hangnail, take it away. I don't want this, this speeding ticket, take it away. I, I, I don't want this, this, death take it away but suffering comes in all different shapes and sizes when we say i re take i don't want to rebel against the sufferings on the way of the cross but then it as it goes on further um lord i offer you the sufferings on the way of the cross and especially his holy wound on his shoulder as atonement for my and all of humanity's rebellion against the cross, every grumbling against your holy arrangements. Holy arrangements. And I, yeah, I'm a grumbler, or I have, right? When I stop to think about the fact that all the crosses I carry in my life are holy and arranged, now, remember, I've done video before on the difference between God's perfect will and God's permissive will. God's perfect will wants zero suffering, zero pain, zero death. But when sin entered the world, because of our choices, there is going to be suffering, and God's permissive will is part of his holy arrangements. When Satan killed Jesus, let him die on the cross, he thought he was victorious. And little did he realize that played right into God's hand and his resurrection was a very thing that got all of us the ability to choose heaven. So when we look at the death of our dad or our child or the cancer that you just were diagnosed with or the bankruptcy or the infidelity your spouse just did to you, do you rebel against that? cross and get angry at God and say, take this away, God, you knew you could have taken it back. Or do you see them as they truly are, as God's holy arrangements? Holy. Remember, that means to be set apart. He set apart these arrangements. He's going to allow Satan to think that he can win, but he knows your heart. He knows the very things that are needed, the very sufferings, the very, very challenges that will actually get you to come on board, that will actually bring your family members home. You know, if you're watching this video, it is not during our times of joy that we cry out to God, it is during our times of suffering. God wants your son back, that's why he's estranged, that's why God's allowed it in his holy arrangements, because he knows that your son will come to a point of great suffering. 
or he will be forced to choose God or choose the other. It's holy arrangements. Of course, you have a role in that. Continue to pray for that child so that when he is in that place, he chooses God. But as I've prayed this prayer, I've, I've realized I don't want to rebel, Lord, against your holy arrangements. Help me to carry my crosses and carry them with grace and haven't gotten there yet, but to carry them with joy. Like the saints who have said, I count all sufferings joy because they see the fruit of their sufferings in heaven and in eternity and in the lives of others. Eternal Father, through Mary's unblemished hands and the divine heart of Jesus, I offer you the sufferings on the way of the cross, especially his holy wound on his shoulder, as atonement for my and all of humanity's rebellion against the cross, every grumbling against your holy arrangements, and all other sins of the tongue. Sins of the tongue. So it challenges me because I think about every time that I grumble against God, I'm sinning with my tongue. When I grumble against it, I'm saying, God, I don't think you know better and I'm mad at you. Or as my three-year-old once said, I'm mad to you. <laughs> because I guess we are childish when we call out to God and tell him to stop something that he knows is only for our good. I don't want you to sin from your tongue either. Do not begrudge the things that God has allowed in your life. Sure, cry out to him, call out to him, ask him for wisdom, ask him for strength, ask him for direction. That's what he wants. He wants you to be like this with him, so close to him each and every day. Call upon him, but don't grumble against him. Say, Jesus, I trust in you. I don't understand this, but I know you do. And all other sins of the tongue. And remember, he gave the blessing. Eternal Father, through Mary's unblemished hands and the divine heart of Jesus, I offer you the sufferings on the way of the cross, especially his holy wound on his shoulder as atonement for my and all of humanity's rebellion against the cross, every grumbling against your holy arrangements and all other sins of, of the tongue as protection against such sins and for true love of the cross. I'm not there yet. But I want to develop a true love of the cross. I want my crosses to be something I love because I see the fruit that they bear now and in eternity. I want you to see the fruit that is born from your crosses. I want you, because Jesus wants it, I want you to have a true love of the cross. So if your spouse has left you and you're a stander, love that cross because God has found you worthy to carry it. You are strong enough to carry it. You are worthy. If your child has died, God has found you worthy to carry that cross that so many others would throw off, hate God, hate the world, and bring others away from the kingdom. You can take your love of God and the death of your child, and you can win souls if you carry that cross with joy. Whatever your cross is, we all have them. Some are small, some are large. You can win souls in the manner with which you carry that cross. Please pray for me. Of the seven prayers, this one is the one that enlightens me most because it's the area I need the most help in. Pray for me and I'll pray for you. We're in this together. This lifetime is a lifetime of crosses, but remember, we'll one day get to put them down for all e eternity forever never again will we pick up a cross teeny tiny or large not the slightest crosses isn't that going to be amazing your lifetime here is short even if you live to be 100 years old that's short in the scheme of a quadzillion billion trillion years to the millionth power <laughs> why have you been there for bazillions of years. This blink of an eye, you, we will be like, what? Why did we even, 
why did we even, it was so short. Of course, but then we'll have perfect knowledge, so we won't have to wonder. We're in this together. I've got you, you've got me. Let's help each other carry one another's crosses. Let's help each other to receive their suffering with joy. And let's embrace God's holy arrangements. No more sins of the tongue, okay? I'm Dr. Christine Bacon. Thank you for watching another informational Bacon Bit. Don't forget to like and subscribe on all my channels. I'm Dr. Christine Bacon, and I want to remind you always to live your life sunny side up.